guys, so today I'm getting ready to rip out this Garrett AR60. It's a 60 trim on the intake side and a 63 trim on the exhaust side. I got a turbo kit, rebuild kit off eBay. Uh, they're anywhere from $30 to $40 ship. Okay, so first thing you're going to do before you do anything, this only applies to people that had their turbochargers in the car before they ripped them out. Okay, so you're basically going to flip it and we're going to look at the bolts. Basically, you're going to want to clean a little spot right here, somewhere on the turbocharger. Uh, I'm going to use a little wipey. And you're going to mark a line so that you don't have to realign like an X and a 1. <clears throat> also, you might even want to mark, you can see right here where the uh, bolt is on the turbine because you might put it the op wrong way. So clean the spot off right there and mark that. You're going to take a 13 millimeter and you're going to go ahead and take off all these bolts all the way around. They're the, they hold the turbine housing to the actual turbine itself. So we're going to take that apart. Okay, so now that you have taken off the turbine housing, which is this, um, just a bunch of brackets right here and the bolts that hold it on, we're going to go ahead, there's the marking that I marked on it. Just leave that alone. Don't wash it. Don't clean it. <laughs> clean it all afterwards. Now we have the exhaust. Be careful. Do not bend these. Scrape them. Whatever. Because um, they're balanced. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and mark uh, somewhere on here. You can see. On here. And then somewhere right here because this is the exhaust side. Mine's so tight. It literally, I'm not kidding, it has to be perfect. Okay, so now that you got that, you're going to take out all these, I believe they are, you can see them, they should be uh, 13 again. So yep, 13 millimeters, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off now. Okay, I'd just like to show you guys something here. Um, there's a bolt right here. See how close it is to where the oil port would go in? I've been trying to hit it with a wrench. You can't put the closed end of the wrench on there, you know. So you have to put the open end. And when you put the open end, they like to separate when you have to put a lot of force. Because this has been heated up, so it's pretty much in there. So you can't get that in there. So what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to get an old wrench. There's two of these on here, actually. But I'm going to get an old wrench, and I'm going to grind it in half. All right, like half. So I'm going to shrink the thickness so I can be able to put it in there and get close end on it and then I can whack it pretty good with a mallet. Okay so I had to grind down some half inch and 13 millimeter wrenches in order to get in there to get those bolts off. Next things next is you can leave these in for right now. We're gonna go ahead and take this bolt off or nut. It's gonna be I believe a 10 millimeter. Okay now you guys gotta remember that it's righty loosey lefty tighty it's the opposite okay on this side it's a uh, 5 8 on the exhaust side I'm just gonna use an alligator grip basically it's a bunch of needles pins and you can push it in there and it'll lock alright so 5 8 on that side typically and a 10 millimeter okay so once you go ahead and get the nut off you're going to go ahead and wiggle it and pull the turbine, the intake side, and you're going to get a rubber mallet and just tap it. Now I already pre-tapped this, but just get a rubber mallet, no metal mallet. You start hitting this and then it, you'll never get this nut back on, all right? Okay, so you got to tap it down and keep tapping. It's probably going to be a little hard if you got as much corrosion as I do. I mean, all kinds of oil. You can see right here, probably going to have to get a couple more. Oh, there we go. Alright, if you guys want to see the destruction, look at that. That's all caked oil. So I've been just gushing oil out the backside. You look in here. Oh, it's just disgusting. So clean all that up. Alright, so obviously I got some bad bearings. Um, the shaft, it's a little pretty wore down. I mean, it's got some scrapes and scratches, but I don't really care about that. Um, it's got a lot of miles on it, obviously. But here's really what's going on that's bad is those are the pistons I was telling you about. These are actually, um, they seal it. 
so no oil exits it. Well, they didn't do a good job, so um, I'm going to clean up all this. Make sure you don't erase your markings and stuff on your turbo right here. They had previously, so I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you're in there cleaning up the rest of the mess that's on that uh, turbo. All the oil and stuff. Make sure you get in here real good, clean out all in here. I went ahead and cleaned out all this right here. It was all gunked up with oil because you won't be able to fit it back in. Uh, this thing got, my sh this shaft, this turbine shaft got pretty ate up as you can see. And you can feel those grits, believe it or not. But I'm going to run it anyway. Um, <clears throat> I don't really care. Um, as long as it doesn't smoke and it spools without too much excess shaft play. I'm going to run it till it dies, but uh, other than that, first thing you want to do is get some steel wool. You can get it anywhere, Walmart, um, they got it. You can even use an SOS pad if you have to. Uh, so just grab some steel wool. SOS pad's probably a little bit more grittier. Just run it around these where the journals are. <clears throat> get it real shiny if you can. Get it, try to get it maybe a little bit smoother than it is, just keep running it back and forth. It's not going to take hardly any metal off, it's, if any at all. It's just going to polish it. It's pretty much the same thing they do when they polish your uh, cranks. So now that you got it, the uh, exhaust side all cleaned up, I mean it's not the best, but I um, just want to get it all off of this part. And definitely you don't want it on the rim here, because that's where it's going to seal back up. And if it's not, if it's got some, you know oil resin in there it's gonna cause it to sit a little higher and it's not gonna butt up. Once you get those four bolts out you're gonna pull it up make sure you take one last possible picture of where it uh, is. Go ahead pull it off and you're left with this. So remember where everything goes. You got the center seal here this would just go on this actually everything's pretty much upside down that's an o-ring this right here is a gear well holds everything together so basically if you look you can't really mess it up there's two grooves kind of like uh, a head has uh, guides they kind of just go just like that. That's it. Just like that. Okay, so here's the kit. The brand new kit you get off eBay. It's 37 bucks shipped. Uh, you might be able to get them a little cheaper. Um, it's a T3, T4 kit. Now keep in mind, all T3, T4 kits are the same. I was a little skeptical at first buying it. And I was like, uh, maybe it won't fit mine. Well, they're all the same. It's all universal. Don't be scared to buy a T3, T4 kit if you have a T3, T4 turbo. Um, I've already looked over everything and it's pretty much, it's all identical, it really is. They even give you the exhaust bolts and the intake bolts um, for your turbo. Uh, just everything's the same, I, I was surprised. Um, that oil ring that you just seen earlier me put on, here it is right here. Um, you'll have seals, here's the nut for the turbine, um, replace the old one. Here's the piston ring. This would be the intake side. This right here is the exhaust side. Um, here's the bearings. It's just, it's pretty cool. And here's the C clamps. Um, the little O ring clamps that go in and lock the bearings in. So we have the core of the turbo. And uh, just telling you about, I was going to use these little, little pins, little thumbtacks to get these out. Okay. So when I took that one out, I'm just going to stick anything in there just to get it out. There's little holes in the bearings. You kind of just pull straight up. There's your bearings. And then we're going to flip to the other side. You can see in there. I'm trying to see what you guys are seeing. Sorry. Okay, so we got the same thing going on here. Now this isn't quite going to work, so I'm going to search around for something else. Okay, so basically I got a little snap on tool. I went ahead and ground it down real fine. I'm just gonna stick it in here. Hopefully it doesn't break off. But they're they're tricky. I'm not gonna lie. There we go. Kind of just want to pry it back up. There we go. 
and figure out a way to get it out. Oh, there it goes. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick this bearing out. You know, there's just a little hole. Kind of just slide it right out. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to be using this multi purpose engine assembly lube with Molly Graphite. It's uh, Stalube makes it. If you can see here. First things first, we're going to go ahead and take a bearing out of the kit that we got from eBay. Doesn't matter which way it goes in because they're both the same all the way around. Um, I'm probably going to lube this up pretty good. So now that we got that nice and lubed up, just go ahead and slide it down in there. Alright, and that one's done. Go ahead and grab these same, or the new ones, clamps. And you're going to just put it in an angle. You might even be able to start, just kind of lay them in there. And you can hold your finger on the back. So and hold it tight so it doesn't move. Hold on the back. Push in and down. And be careful not to hit that bearing. There's one. And you want to go in and down on two. And that's it. Keep your thumb finger there so if you do slip you kind of hit your finger instead of slicing the bearing up. Alright, so that one's in. Just give them a little push on the inside. And that's it. They're all mucked up. Then go ahead and this one's going to be a little trickier. You're going to kind of have to wiggle it. And then there we go. Now that one's down in there. We're going to do the same thing with that other C clamp. Circle clamp, whatever you call them. You're going to set it down in kind of like this. It has little teeth on the original OEM ones. You set it down in there. Oop. You're going to hold your finger on it like that. You're going to take this. You're going to pull down. There's one. And then you're going to do the same thing to the other one. There's two. Always double check them and push down on them. Make sure they're locked in there real well. Because if not, you're going to have problems. Alright. Okay, we got those bearings in there.